you're ready. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to talk to you this morning on whether you should build or buy your next system. Uh, let me start out by asking a dumb question. Has anybody in here ever bought a computer, desktop, laptop? Anybody ever bought one in your life? Okay, obviously, the, the majority of them. Uh, what would you say, would anybody like to share with us what you, in your opinion, what was the, uh, the most important thing, the most important factor when you considered buying? Or was it maybe a hard drive size? Was it uh, needed to have a certain amount of RAM? Anybody, anybody want to share? Go ahead. That worked. What is it? That it worked. That it worked? Okay, okay. Uh, what about anybody ever built? Anybody ever built their own system? Okay. Uh, what was the uh, what was the same question? What was the most important thing um, that you considered? What, what, what caused you to want to build one versus just going to store buying one? Cost? Um, big parts and make it look pretty. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That I'm going to be covering that in the presentation. So that's exactly right. Yeah. That's uh, those are two uh, good considerations. The two things why you should you should uh, be able to buy your, your next system. Uh, so to build or to buy is a debatable subject, uh, it's highly debatable, it's about as debatable as whether you should choose a PC or a Mac, uh, an Intel or an AMD processor, uh, etc. Uh, however, the general consensus between builders and buyers normally comes down to one important question. What will the system be used for? Will there be a uh, heavy load placed on the system? Is it going to be a workhorse or do you just need a simple computer for web browsing, Microsoft Office, and other low power tasks. Uh, most often it's your gamer who prefers to build their system and rightfully so. Uh, but there are also certain professions that highly benefit from a powerful custom built system. Professionals such as uh, artists, photographers, architects, animators, and filmmakers uh, can all, they'll all need a high end system that's capable of handling a heavy workload. Having said all that, let's dig right into the pros and the cons of building versus buying your next system. Uh, we'll start with building. The first benefit to building your own system primarily relates to a, uh, a high-end build where you can save a substantial amount of money on components due to the manufacturer's markup, which on average is at least 30%. Uh, the second benefit is the customization options uh, available, allowing you to install only good quality name brand components versus components bought at the cheapest bulk price that the manufacturer could find. Another benefit to building your own machine is not only the upgradeability, but the reusability of most of the components in the system. Uh, for instance, over time, your computing needs may change. Uh, you may find yourself needing a more powerful system just to keep up with today's games and programming software. Uh, although upgrading may be an option, it does have its limitations. Inevitably, you may need to upgrade your motherboard and consequently uh, your CPU, possibly even your RAM. Uh, but more likely the case, the power supply, uh, possibly the graphics card and possibly the sound card, uh, the hard drive and optical drive can all be re reused in future builds which will decrease the cost. Uh, your first build might cost a little bit but over a period of time, reusing those same high quality name brand components from a previous build could save you a lot. And last but not least, uh, probably a huge benefit is being able to install a clean uh, operating system without all the aggravating and quite frankly useless OEM software and applications that come with the store-bought system. Uh, although the benefits of building your, your next system are many, there are some disadvantages. An obvious disadvantage is the hours upon hours that you may need to spend brainstorming and web surfing to not only find the specific components you are needing for a particular type of build, but also ensuring the compatibility of all those desired components within the system. Uh, luckily, there are invaluable websites, websites such as PCPartPicker.com that can help you with this uh, sometimes tedious and time-consuming task. The second disadvantage of building your own machine is the fact that you are on your own when it comes to uh, any kind of technical support. So having a solid foundation troubleshooting, and maybe even a couple friends that know a little bit more about it than, than you do uh, can prove to be invaluable. Uh, as, a, as, a, as I briefly mentioned in an earlier slide, some if not all manufacturers have the advantage of buying components in bulk uh, from the cheapest supplier in order to increase profit and save money for them 
and possibly the consumer. Now, although this may result in lower quality components being installed in a store-bought system, it may be a happy medium for the end user that doesn't require a high-end workstation. Uh, again, if your computing needs revolve solely around web browsing, email, uh, home office programs, and other low-power tasks, you'll probably benefit more from an, uh, an inexpensive store-bought system. That being said, let's take a look at some of the benefits to purchasing a pre-built system. Uh, first, unlike building your own custom machine, the time spent versus the money saved researching and assembling a, a system for simple tasks would probably be... Uh, would probably not be advantageous enough to even, even fool with spending all that time trying to build one. Uh, second, and one of the most beneficial reasons to purchase a pre-built system would have to be uh, the warranty. Uh, say for instance something little and inexpensive such as a fan decides to go out and ends up causing your system to overheat and, and frying your whole system. Uh, it may be a pain to box everything up and uh, ship it back, but you'll be thankful that you had that warranty. Uh, Remember, the more specialized the build, uh, the more money lost if something goes wrong unless the system is covered under warranty. Finally, consider buying for uh, family members who are less uh, tech savvy. Being, being tech support for family and friends is fine once in a while, but I think as we would all agree, uh, it can cause some problems of its own when you're the only person that they call because you are the one that built their system. So. Uh, you know, letting Dell and HP and Acer, and Lenovo, etc., letting them be the primary point of contact if something goes wrong is not a bad idea. There are definitely a few disadvantages of building your own system. Uh, in my opinion, you'll miss out on the one thing that you can't put a price on. That's experience. The experience, uh, the knowledge you'll gain from that, from building your own system. Buying a pre-built machine completely eliminates the educational and learning experience that you will definitely gain by building your own system. Uh, not to mention the sense of pride, achievement, and confidence uh, when it's all said and done. As I mentioned earlier, upgrading may be an option, but it does have its limitations due to the proprietary parts uh, a lot of manufacturers are using these days. Which leads me to my final point, which is the selection of parts. Uh, with a pre-built system, you may, but probably uh, will not have any say in exactly what components are in that system. And that alone can sometimes be a deal breaker in itself. Uh, all right, so now let's take a look at this video, which uh, repeats pretty much some of the things that I've already mentioned, uh, but it also offers some other considerations uh, in whether or not you should build or buy your next system. Store-bought OEM PCs or custom-built PCs. Should you build or buy your next computer? In this video, I'm going to give you four reasons why you shouldn't and four reasons why you should. First up, the reasons why you shouldn't build your own PC. Number one, a lack of support. When you build your own PC, you are the cavalry when things go wrong. If there's a hardware problem or failure of some kind, you've got to troubleshoot it yourself. You only have a warranty on the individual components, not the entire machine. In other words, there's no one responsible for ensuring you have a proper PC experience. Number two, you've got to know what you're doing. Building a PC isn't for everyone. That's why most people buy a pre-built PC from an OEM. It takes time and technical skill to assemble a PC, and if you're not up to the task, then it's probably best that you buy a PC on the shelf. Number three, resale value. One of the major problems with building your own PC is the fact that when it comes time to replace it, you'd better be willing to either give it away, keep it in storage, or throw it in the trash. Trying to sell your unbranded homebrew computer to someone on eBay is going to be virtually impossible. Potential buyers will be concerned about the build quality, whether the machine is in good working order or if it actually works at all. Custom PCs simply do not hold their value. Conversely, OEM PCs do hold a good deal more value even after several years because they come from a recognized source. Incidentally, second-hand Macs sell for very good money years after you're finished with them. I bought my 24-inch iMac back in 2008 for 2,700 euros, and it sold in 2013 for 550 euros. Not bad. Number four, you can't build an all-in-one PC. This probably won't bother most custom PC builders, but it's still worth considering. All-in-one PCs are machines with all of the physical hardware and the display built into one unit. Obviously, a custom PC is a separate desktop tower unit from the external display. The advantage of such machines is that they offer a big saving of space on your desk. 
Moreover, they're easier to move around and they usually look pretty good too. However, they offer much less upgrade options than conventional desktop towers, so this probably won't matter too much to the average custom PC builder. Now for the reasons why you should build your own PC. Number one, you'll get much better specs for the money you spend. OEM PC manufacturers place a margin on the machines they sell. The construction labor costs are also factored into the price of the computer. Because you're doing it all yourself, you don't have to worry about that. You can make huge savings by building your own machine. For the same money as a mid-range desktop computer, you can build a behemoth gaming rig with insane processing and graphical horsepower. Number two, that leads me to my next point. You can have it all your own way. You can build your computer to your own specifications and design tastes. There's a huge amount of custom cases, mods, and peripheral options available. You really can make your PC your very own. Many custom builders are hobbyists, and their own machines are personal projects of theirs. They therefore have much more sentimental value to them. Number three, they offer much more upgrade options. OEMs tend to include power supplies that only just barely cover the power requirements of the components inside the machine. This means that upgrade options tend to be limited enough aside from a few manufacturers that produce high-end gaming rigs. That super powerful GPU you'd be looking to buy and install into your Dell or Lenovo PC may need a beefier power supply than the one they supply. Because building your own PC allows you to select whatever components you want, so long as the motherboard allows for it, you can slap in an awesome power supply with plenty of headroom for future power-hungry GPUs and other components. And finally, number four, you can select only the best components for use in your PC. OEMs switch hardware vendors for things like RAM, hard drives, and optical drives on a regular basis. From month to month, the quality of the components will vary. You simply don't truly know what you're getting with an OEM. Not always, anyway. Choosing your own hardware will give you peace of mind. So guys, please let me know in the comments below, would you prefer to buy a pre-built OEM machine or build your own? Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and of course hit that big red subscribe button to subscribe to the Free Forever channel. You can check out my previous video over on the left hand side. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. So like I said, uh, a, lot of, a lot of things that he mentioned I had already previously mentioned except for uh, one thing he said um, that you, the resale value, he mentioned the uh, resale value about uh, if you, a custom built system, somebody may not be as apt to, to wanna, um, to buy a resale, or, or I'm sorry, to buy a computer that you've built due to the uh, wondering, you know, about the quality of it and, and all that, so. Uh, okay, so up to this point, we've been primarily talking about um, desktops. However, in this very mobile world that we're living in, wouldn't it be nice to be able to build your own laptop? Well, the good news is you can by purchasing what is called a bare bones notebook. Uh, though you're unlikely to find uh, bare bones note notebooks for sale at your local uh, electronics store, a number of the models are available through online retailers such as Newegg, Tiger Direct, and RJ Tech. Keep in mind, however, that your options uh, are nowhere near as vast as a de desktop. Uh, it will likely come with a few built-in components that cannot be easily swapped out. Since the notebook shell is not particularly customizable, you'll be stuck with the screen and the keyboard that are already built into the shell. Uh, the, shell will, uh, the shell will also come with the motherboard attached already and will determine which parts uh, that you can use for the rest of your laptop, just, just like with a, a desktop, you know, the motherboards, that's going to determine a lot. And with a bare bones notebook, it comes with the motherboard already, that comes with it, you don't get to pick that most of the time. Uh, all right, so in conclusion, I'd like to, to show one last video, which will offer uh, some helpful tips to consider when building a PC. All right, so let's begin with the gear. The magnetic screwdriver, get it. You won't regret it. There are plenty affordable kits that you can buy online through Amazon and through other means. It's not gonna be harmful if you're a sane person and handling your components with respect. It will save you some nerves from trying to you know, find that little screw that has fallen in the little crack of the black hole that is some crevice inside your case or underneath the motherboard. 
magnetic screwdriver is a must. The best way to organize your screws is to use something like this. Uh, little compartments to organize your thumb screws, your drive screws, your motherboard screws, very handy. I know everyone wants to peel off the protective film off the acrylic side panels. I know the sound is really something, but don't. Keep that on until you're finished with the build to prevent unnecessary scratches and potentially ruining your day by finding giant little scratches everywhere after your assembly if you're not careful. And if you own a tempered glass case, still keep the protective film on, not to prevent scratches, but to prevent finger marks, so that you can peel that thing in the end and it will look shiny and beautiful. Something I do with every single new case that comes into the studio is to loosen up all the thumb screws that I know I will uh, remove eventually because they're tightened way too hard out of the factory and it just helps with the assembly process. Static discharge is a big deal. Make sure to ground yourself either with like one of those grounding straps or touch the metal of the case before handling your components to avoid any uh, unintentional damage to your hardware. Remember that placing the CPU inside the CPU socket does not require any force, both on Intel and AMD platforms, so double check to make sure that triangle alignment is correct and you'll be good. An easy way to remember which memory slots to occupy if you're not occupying all of them, say you're using 2 out of 4 or 4 out of 8, is to uh, occupy the non-black DIMMs first or refer to your uh, instructions manual for clarification. A common practice for new builds is to actually assemble everything outside of the case uh, load into the BIOS and make sure that the hardware is recognized. If you also want to install Windows, that's also good to do before inserting everything inside the case to avoid any troubleshooting headaches. Another common practice is to visualize your build and how things will be structured inside the case, potentially might highlight some of those red flags for compatibility. A few things to keep in mind is not all cases have 140 millimeter fan support at the rear, and if you're installing radiator and fans at the top for most mid towers, you might run into compatibility issues with high dim.